Hello, everybody, and welcome to Faith on Friday Extra. This series is all about highlighting people, topics, and businesses that I know that you will find inspiring, interesting, and encouraging. And I'm your host, Ricky Smith. Today, you are in for a treat. You know, we all go through things, ups and downs, ins and outs, but I have met the most amazing woman who has a phenomenal story of the downs in life, but also the ups and the highs. Her name is Onyx King. Hello, Onyx. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. It is just my honor. It's my honor. Oh, this is going to be good. And I'm so excited to hear your story. So let's just jump right in. Onyx, you know, as women, we all go through things, right? We go through the ups and downs of just life, being married, having relationships, our children, the whole nine. But your start was a little tumultuous, wasn't it? Yes, it was. It was. I, I actually literally lived in a cage from the ages of two until seven. Wow. And it was just a horrible thing. I was a victim of sexual, physical, and emotional child abuse. And it was actually horrible. I thought I was nothing. Oh, I didn't think anybody goodness. cared about me. I thought I was just so dark that, well, I was actually told that I was so dark that nothing or I was worse less than nothing, that nobody would ever care about me, that I was just a thing. That's exactly mm -hmm. how my start was. Now, wait, now who, at the hand of all this, who was this? Were these your parents or just relatives? Yes, it was my mother. Oh, my goodness. And then for her to tell you that you were so dark, which, and I love this story. Tell us the story about your name, Onyx. Okay. Um, I was born with the name Antoinette. But everybody always teased me because I am so dark. And actually, one day, my uncle had the nerve to tell me that I was so black that the oil light came on when I got out of the car. Honest, how and old I were you when he told you that? Crushed. Seven. Oh. Seven. Oh, I was just goodness. so crushed. So, but I was my grandmother. I was I probably, she was my favorite person. I always thought I was hers, but I guess everybody thought we were the, her favorite person. <laughs> but she took me to a jewelry store and she showed me all of these pieces of jewelry with a black stone in the middle. Oh, wow. And I said, mama, what is that stone? And she told me that stone was called an onyx. Mm -hmm. And I was as precious to her as that jewelry would be to the people who would buy that jewelry. And I've been called onyx ever since. Wow. And you are definitely a treasure. Now, Onyx, you actually made it out, if you will, of that horrible upbringing. But what happened yeah. next? Well, what happened is I even after going through all those things, I thought I got the attention of a young man. And this is a trap that, you know, women, we, we fought for that. He okay. was very handsome to me. Mm -hmm. He had a lot of money and I was a young girl. And that was important to me as I see the young women today. Mm. What I didn't think about is where was the money coming from? You know, mm. how was he able to afford that lifestyle? But I didn't mm. think about that. I thought I'm really black. I'm, I'm a fat girl. Mm. And this brother who is uh, handsome and has a lot of money is interested in me. And I've just hit the jackpot. That's right. That's exactly what I thought. <laughs> right. And so, you know, my life was just like a fairy tale for three years. For three mm. years, it was like a fairy tale. Mm -hmm. And then the feds kicked in the door. I'm sorry. You said then the feds the kicked, feds in, the kicked door. in the door. Yes. How and old were you when the feds, how old were you when the feds kicked in your door? I was 22 years old. Oh my gosh. I was 22 years old. My twins were two and a half. My oldest daughter was seven. And I was sentenced to prison for 30 years. Okay. I ended up. Wow. Wait, girl, yeah. that is a lot. <laughs> so apparently you found out where his money was coming from. Yes, he was a drug dealer. And mm -hmm. back then, in the early 90s, there was this big war on drugs. Mm -hmm. And what ended up happening is like girlfriends and wives and moms, they are the ones who got those harsh sentences. Wow. And I was given a 30 year sentence. Well, after all of the cuts were done and they did all the time cuts. I ended up doing 22 years and seven months in prison. And I was released on Christmas Eve of 2015. Oh my gosh. Onyx, what happened during that time? I mean, your, your attorneys, what was your defense like that you doing nothing, knowing anything, you ended up still serving, serving 22 years. Okay, let, me, let, me, let me tell people this, and this is something I really need people to know. Mm-hmm. 
as I said, the feds kicked in my door. So mm -hmm. when the federal government kicks in your door, it's not like the state and they're trying to make a case and they have all this evidence. The feds don't have to have an, any evidence. They put something on me called conspiracy. And conspiracy simply means two people saying the same thing about you. And that, that's all they needed. And I, didn't, I, had, a, I had a public defender mm -hmm. and I was listening to the other girls in jail because I hate to tell you this, but in jail, everybody's a lawyer. They think they are. Right. And they were thinking about the state law. They were saying, don't, don't cooperate, don't cooperate. You won't get any prison time. Mm -hmm. Well, see what they didn't understand and what I didn't know is see, it was a federal crime. And see the federal system, if you do not cooperate, mm -hmm. you will go down really, really hard because the feds are like that either. And that's also with bonds and everything. Either you're mm -hmm. going to get one or you're not going to be able to pay, to pay it. Wow. So when they ask you for information, most of the time they already know anyway. Mm -hmm. The information they want you to know, they already know it. Mm -hmm. And if you don't cooperate, then they're going to take offense to that. And they're going to take it like, Wow. You know, you're trying to hide from them. And so and that's exactly what they did. I thought they didn't have no evidence. I'm just going to be quiet. I don't want to be a snitch. I don't want to do this. Right, well, right. what I didn't understand was it didn't matter. You were 22 years old. Yes. And two little babies. A three. I had a oh. set of twins. Every two and a half. And okay. my oldest daughter was seven. Wow. So you had three babies, 22 yep. years old, and you're going to jail for 22 years years what was running through your mind at that time that my life is over mm. that my life is over and I was very angry and mm. you know I thought about all of the things that had happened to me in my life and I thought this is not fair oh, sure. the start to my life I didn't deserve it it's not fair mm -hmm. so I went to live with my grandparents they introduced me to this Jesus well what I didn't know then is what I know now you can't get to heaven on somebody else's coattails come on preach so, girl <laughs> You can't do that. So I didn't know. I knew I could sing. Everybody thought, oh, she has a beautiful voice. She can sing. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened. I didn't know that I really needed a relationship. Right. So I never really got that. I didn't concentrate on that. Mm -hmm. I just concentrated on, oh, I'm finally getting some attention because I can yeah. sing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What I didn't realize until wow. I was in prison and scared, laying on that floor in the hole, that because I was so yeah. angry when I first got there. Oh, well, gosh, yeah, I can imagine. You're 22 I mean, years old. You're yeah. in jail for something you did not do. And nobody right. was rescue. No one was No one was coming to help you. And you didn't know what to do. And, yeah, I could see anger big time. I was very angry. I always was in trouble until after I had been doing that for maybe 10 years. Mm -hmm. And then I was, put, I was put in a hole, a special cell in the, the shoe. It's called the shoe special housing unit okay. and they had built plexiglass around it because I had mm -hmm. a horrible filthy habit of throwing urine and feces out on the guards as they walked by to check me now so see, okay, it was Onyx, so you are talking yeah. about stuff no I, and and I mean this is so incredible because you're talking about things a lot of us have never heard of or even seen on TV you know what I'm talking about and so you're talking about things like the shoe and the hole can you explain a little bit more about what that is and why were you in yes. what's called the hole why were you there okay there's a when you're in prison and you do really bad things and they want to punish you they will put you in a place where it's total isolation you're in a dark cell by yourself and that's called the hole Okay. And they'll put you there. And, and I was in a special room and I had taken all of my clothes away and I was laying on the floor and I said, you know what? I said this prayer. I said, God, I don't know if you're real. Mm -hmm. Even though I grew up singing in the church after I got out of that horrible situation, mm -hmm. I did not know for myself that he was real. Right. So I said out loud, God, I don't know if you're real. Mm -hmm. But if you are, you better come down here and save me right now because I've had it. Yeah. yeah. Now, I would love to tell you that the doors magically opened. Right. And I was, <laughs> <laughs> that did not happen. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you what did happen. Mm -hmm. Something that I had searched for my entire life, mm -hmm. growing up, trying to get everybody's affection in that cage as a child and wow. even in that cage as an adult. Mm -hmm. What I got was a sense of peace and it spread over my entire wow. life. Wow. Wow. 
at that moment, I realized that God was real. Yeah. At that very Through moment. the peace. It was that peace. I had been troubled my entire life. Sure. Out of all the things that I'd gone through, I thought it's not fair. Nobody mm. cares. I had a peace that just flooded my whole body. And it wow. literally felt like somebody had just wrapped their arms around me. Literally. Mm -hmm. now, I was butt naked laying on the floor. Wow. Of this dark cell. Mm -hmm. And I literally could feel God wrapping mm -hmm. his arms around me. Oh my and just gosh. giving me his peace. Because I didn't have any peace of my own. Mm -hmm. But he gave me some of his peace. And right. it flooded my entire body. And for oh the first gosh. time ever, I knew he was real. Yeah. I didn't get released. And I started yelling, hey, hey, God is real. And they're like, shut up. <laughs> I'm like, no, listen, I'm serious. God is real. He's real. He's real. And, you know, nobody wanted to listen. And so yeah. I said, okay. And I just, all I did was I started, this time I when I began to sing all these songs that I learned growing up and all these hymns, they right. had a special meaning to me. Sure. When yeah. I sang that nursery rhyme, yes, Jesus loves me. I really felt for the first time that Jesus really did love mm, me. Yeah, I know. And so eventually, I, go, go ahead. ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. <laughs> I stayed. I stayed in that segregation cell for another whole year. Wow. But I got. I was given a Bible, and I was able to read it again. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of us have read the Bible now for the first time. I, I actually read the Old Testament. I'm going to be real with you. The Old Testament was really boring for me. Yeah, I and it, <laughs> it's it okay. was. And even the New Testament took on a whole new meaning when I read it this time. Mm -hmm. When I was released from that segregation unit where they was keeping me totally alone, I went back into general population. I began to teach Sunday school because I wanted other people to know. And mm -hmm. there were so many people there that didn't know. I began to teach Sunday school. I mm -hmm. began to teach GED classes. I just felt like I'm not going to die. Wow. I'm really going to live. Right. And I'm going to live and I'm going to tell these people what, mm -hmm. what is making me feel so good. So now I'm the happiest person that I know, mm -hmm. even though I've gone through so much, but I'm so happy because Jesus really does love me. Yeah. And I really do know that. And so you are in prison. You, you know, you found Jesus for yourself. You're teaching yes. other folks. Now, how old were you now at this time? When at this, the, with the, when the that piece. first happened, I can remember it was, I was 31. Wow. Okay. So you had already been in jail, you know, yeah. nine, almost 10 years. Acting a whole complete fool. What you say? A whole fool, huh? Yeah. A complete fool. Yeah. Because I know you were starting to say that you had gotten into this bad habit of throwing feces and urine on the guards. That yes. would be a okay, whole bunch this. of foolishness right there. Yes. I used to fight all the time. I was really mean. Mm -hmm. It was just horrible. I was, it was so your anger. angry. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Now, even though you were there, did God also send you mentors along the way? Did you find people after that were helping you along the walk after a while? After a while now, after I came, after I was 31 and I began to teach Sunday school, mm -hmm. I was in this program called the Life Connections Program. Mm -hmm. And that, and that's a special unit that they had inside the prison where mm -hmm. I went in that, in that unit and it was like a faith-based program. Mm -hmm. It didn't tell you what religion, because it had several different religions. Sure. We learned about them all. We did have mentors that came to visit us. Mm -hmm. And to help us along the walk, whatever religion you are, that there were some right. women that were Muslim, there were some women that were Catholic, whatever religion you were, they found somebody that was on the outside okay. that would come in mm -hmm. and help mm -hmm. you go mm -hmm. through the things that you needed to go through. Wow. And so that happened. And I was teaching school then. I had got on the wow. praise team in the prison. I was mm -hmm. singing on the praise, teaching Sunday school, teaching GED classes in mm -hmm. English and in Spanish. All and right, then. I was just doing... Yeah, I was just doing everything I could because mm -hmm. I knew that I was not going to be there always. But right. while I was there, mm -hmm. I wanted to help someone right. that felt that your like life I, would not be in vain, huh? No. Mm -hmm. See, I'm telling you, when they had that big war on drugs, a, there were a lot of moms and girlfriends and wives in prison mm -hmm. 
right. for something that their spouse did or their brother did or their right. child did. And I knew wow. that that was a hurtful thing. That was mm-hmm. hard for me. Mm-hmm. And so I knew it would be hard for the other people. Yeah. So now, I did your children share. visit you? I mean, because you were in a long no. time. Did your family no. visit or anything? No. no. Where were you I in prison half, at? I was halfway. I was in, I started out in Danbury, Connecticut. Mm-hmm. And then I went to Tallahassee, Florida. Wow. And then I went to Virginia, West Virginia. And then the last place I was at was in Carswell, Texas, was in Fort Worth, Texas, which My. is how I ended up down here. Okay. So, you so, know, I didn't get mm-hmm. No visitor. That must have been even harder still. Well, I just real. I mean, nobody cared. I mean, but, mm-hmm. and most people in federal prison, they have, they're either very wealthy or they had sold a lot of drugs. So they have a lot of money. And okay. so I was like, I was, out of, <laughs> I was a different fish then too, because mm-hmm. I didn't have that. Right. And, and the federal system for women, they don't have a federal prison for women in a lot of states. Wow. So you had to go where there was one. Oh my goodness. Okay. So you had this horrible upbringing. You ended up in jail for 22 years behind somebody that, that you had nothing to do with, but you got out. Yes, I did. So you 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 served 22 years and how many months? And seven months. And you got out when? And I got out on Christmas Eve of 2015. Talk to me about getting out of prison at that time. Okay, after being in prison for so long, when I got out, I'm telling you, I was walking down the street saying, can somebody tell me where a payphone is? Oh. In 2015, yeah. people were like, oh, what? Yeah. Nobody knew because, see, I didn't have probation or parole, so they didn't send me back to Michigan. Oh, my goodness. I was still in Texas. Mm-hmm. I found my way to a transitional house. I slept under the bridge the very first night. So they you just, they just way. let you go, get out, here's yeah. your stuff, have a super great life. Yes. Oh my gosh. And, and, it, and I turned around, I got out, I slept under the bridge, I made my way to this little neighborhood and I found a transitional home. I went to church and met my pastor that next day. And I have been at my church, Como First Missionary Baptist Church in Como, Texas ever since. I love it. I love them. <laughs> And <laughs> that have, is wonderful. And because yeah. now I know also that things are doing nothing but looking up for you. So you went through all this, got out, walked around, slept under a bridge, found a transitional home, found a church. But things are going really well for you right now, Onyx, aren't they? Tell us a little <laughs> bit about what you got going on because I'm excited for you. I am. I am a published author nine times over. All right. I Say that. I have a really good job. I am actually getting married in 35 days. Oh, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> oh, so Thank tell us about you. your book. Now, you said you, you're an author six times. Tell us no, about no, your book. Nine times. Nine times. I'm sorry. So <laughs> tell me about the books that you've written and how did they get started and the where very- can people get them? <laughs> The very first book I ever wrote is called The Girl That Glows, and it's my life story. Mm. And it starts from the very beginning. And that book is available on lulu.com. Okay. Okay? Okay. The Girl That Glows, and my name is Onyx King. I also Mm -hmm. have um, books on Amazon right now Mm -hmm. by Onyx King, Pandemic by Onyx King, Even Me by Onyx King on Amazon right now. But I- no one would look at you and say, huh, I look like to me like she slept in a cage and oh my gosh, you must have been in jail. Onyx, you are doing it and I'm excited for you. I am so thrilled and I appreciate you telling us your story. You all, if you love Onyx and you love the story, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Give us a thumbs up and also leave a comment. And don't worry because all of Onyx's contact information will be in the description below because I want to make sure that you get her book and also reach out, connect with her because I'm sure she has some more things that she would love (laughs) to tell us. And we're going to make sure that you all can do this. Onyx, you know the deal. Before we let you go, <laughs> we have to play our game. <laughs> Yay! 
<laughs> this game is super simple. It's called This or That. I'm basically going to give you a choice between two things, and you, off the top of your head, just let me know which ones you like the best. Are you ready to play? Okay. I'm ready. All right, here we go. Android or iPhone? Android. Read the book or see the movie? Read the book. Of course. Wallflower or Life of the Party? Life of the Party. I can totally see that. <laughs> Summer Fun or Winter Wonderland? Actually, Winter Wonderland. That is a little surprising. And ew. Yeah. <laughs> eat to live or live to eat? Uh-oh. Live to eat. <laughs> you and me both, girl. You and me both. Out in nature or just in the house? In the house. In the house. I'm not going out in nature. No. <laughs> Coke or Pepsi? Oh, I don't even drink soda at all. That's okay. <laughs> Drive. Pepsi, or Pepsi is sweeter. Okay. All right. There you go. Drive or ride? Ride. Yeah, me too. I like sports or I don't care. I don't care. Yeah, I know, girl. <laughs> so when you were in younger and you were in high school, Onyx, what was your first job? You know what? I worked at a McDonald's drive through I'll never forget it. <laughs> never. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of folks listening who remember working at a fast food point and McDonald's, never will forget it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and some of them who would want to try to forget it, but that's okay. Onyx, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. I'm looking so forward to getting your book and hopefully everybody else gets it too. Don't forget, you all, <laughs> make sure to get Onyx's information down in the description because you there's a lot going on here and a lot left to tell. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. And thank you so much for being a part of this Onyx because I really appreciate it. Everybody, we will see you next time on Extra.